There's always an element of mystery. They're quite enigmatic paintings, also quite dark, you know, so this sense of something very unsettling, something strange going on. And the doorway, in a way, is like um, a threshold between the life that we know, the commonplace, the everyday, and the kind of dark forces that might lie behind or beneath. And that was what she was very interested in exploring through her work. Dorothea Tanning's art pieces pushed the boundaries of and expanded the language of surrealism. Right from her earliest pieces, she brought an element of mystery, a dreamlike quality, and a hint of the uncanny. Born in Illinois in 1910, she lived until 101. She discovered surrealism when she was a young artist living in New York in the 1930s. But it was her romantic relationship with Max Ernst, who she married in 1946, that she was famous for until she came into her own space. With this exhibition, the Tate seeks to address that. So this is an opportunity now to present this retrospective exhibition here at Tate Modern and to really look at this body of work. This is Dorothea Tanning, you know, we're not, we're not, she, she's no longer in the shadow of her more famous husband, Max Ernst. Here she is, let's get to grips with this body of work. And the range of work is staggering. Much of the work here has never been shown in the UK before, like Endgame, a reimagining of chess that hints at the surrealist circle she became part of, and which captures the intimacy of the game that brought her and Ernst together. Then there's Ina Kleiner Nacht music from the Tate's own collection, with its sleepwalking doll-like girls who seem to defy gravity. What do Tanning's pieces mean? Well, ultimately, that's up to you. She was an artist that refused to be put in any box. Tanning disregarded the notion of women artists, calling the phrase a contradiction in terms and comparing it to man artist or elephant artist. For the same reasons, she refused to be restricted to one single medium, choosing instead to sculpt, paint, and even write poetry. Her sculptures are particularly intriguing. She used old fabrics and kind of stitched them and stuffed them with kapok and wool and she uses tweeds and different kind of fleshy pink fabrics. So they have this very bodily form and a very bodily feel to them. And they're very much ahead of their time because we can see echoes of this work in the work of Louise Bourgeois or um, Sarah Lucas, for example, in a more contemporary artist practice. But Dorothea Tanning was doing this back in the 60s and 70s. When we talk about surrealism, we almost always speak of the men of the genre. Andre Breton, Salvador Dali, and of course, Tanning's husband, Max Ernst. But while the men were being lauded, Tanning was just getting on with it, creating an incredible oeuvre that was unique, dreamy, and sometimes unsettling. Now the Tate is ensuring her legacy. Whether famous for her sculptures, novels, or her paintings, the impression she left on the art world will not go unnoticed. Miranda Atty, TRT World, London.